Gorian. It's Anthony here. Sorry I can't be sorry I can't be there there in person today. I wish I could. I just when you're so busy and everything, it you know it not a lot you can do. So you know what? I thought I'd figure I would I would post I would post my lecture on basically my life with autism. Three words: understanding, accepting, and embracing. Um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to let your teacher know, and um, they'll they'll ask they'll ask it to me. They'll answer it, or um, they'll just let me know on their emails. Um, I want to share with you guys today, um, basically, what my life is like having autism. Um, autism is a disorder. It's um, it, it's, I don't see it as a disability, but more of an, uh, as an, an, an ability. Basically, it is something that is, um, it's unique. It, it's very, very, um, it's very, very unique. And it's um, something that I've had throughout my life. And it's um, something that I continue to embrace and um, something that I continue to talk about on several several occasions and um, I like to I like to share it with your class share it with you guys um, gives you, maybe give you guys a different outlook on me and um, what you guys view me as you know rather than just this cranky lunch monitor type of guy or this fun loving sports guy you know I mean there's other parts of myself that is um, that people don't know about with me and um, just want to share that part with you guys today. Um, I was born in 1987 at, in Pontiac, and um, I was very much, you know, anyone who knows me knows that I was, um, you know, I was very loud, very, um, very protective. Um, you know, obviously I'm a twin. Um, you guys, a lot of you guys know that my brother is Sammy. Um, I'm a twin, but in um, September of 1993, or 1990, not 1993, 1990, um, I was three years old at the time. Um, I struggled with speaking. I was more off or less, um, I was being loud at restaurants, getting kicked out, humiliating, humiliating my mother and my father. Um, and I and I would me and Sam would often cause trouble for our parents, but we would also not speak, and uh, we struggled with speaking. So as a result, um, our speech pathologist, Karen Scussel Graham, great great lady, I love her to this day, um, encouraged along with some um, Jim Diem, my uncle from Community Living Services encouraged, recommended that we go down to the University of Michigan to see if, um, if we have um, this thing, this unique thing called autism. And um, the doctor, Dr. Sai, well-known doctor in Mich at the University of Michigan at the time, very good guy, very respectful guy. Um, so they were doing some research, some tests, and it was concluded that both Sam and I were diagnosed with Asperger's syndrome, which is the highest functioning form of autism. And um, at that time, my grandfather on my dad's side refused to accept it. The reason why he refused was he believed that Sam and I could do more and do more and succeed. There's this conception, this perception that, that if you are labeled with autism or Asperger's or any other disability, that you were not that you were not going to be able to succeed in life, that you were not able to make friends, or that you were not going to be able to drive a car, function in society. And um, you know, looking back at that, you know, Today, compared to today, um, nothing can be further from the truth. Um, I would not be speaking to you today had I not um, learned to 
accept, understand, and embrace my life with autism. Um, so my mom and my dad came up with plans to basically, they felt that my brother and I could really, really succeed. And, um, you know, we're not going to let the, the label of, be, of having autism um, view me and Sammy for who we are. And so when I think about my younger life, I think more of my mom giving me, quote, military work. So like keep, keeping on reminding, keeping on like, you know, writing down notes saying, do this and do that, do this, and repeating them. And really just repeating them multiple and multiple and multiple times. And um, we just ended up having to really continue it, you know. So there was basically this routine where we kept on working at it and working at it and working. And it would not, it would not stop. Even during times that we would want it to stop, there were times where, you know, we couldn't. We couldn't stop. My mom and dad would not allow it. And um, so really it was like my mother at times more so was more seen as this military general in a way at home. And it was very, um, you know, it was, it was crazy. But, I mean, she did it for the right reasons and um, it really, really helped out a lot. Um, as for like my speaking, as I made mention, Karen Scusselgram. Um, I really call her my second, basically my second mom, because she basically taught me and Sam how to talk. Um, my dad also had a friend, her name was Shelly, or his name, or her name was Shelly, sorry. My, uh, but they were, we were seeing her as well. We were having speech pathologist therapies. Um, we learned a lot from her as well. Karen really, she took the incentive to really, really teach Sam and I to, to talk. And she was really, really determined to get the job done. And I will always be grateful to her because she really taught Sam and I how to really to talk, to function. Um, it was really a group effort. I mean, it starts at home with my mom and dad, and then it, and then it came to Karen, and then it came to others like Shelly and others who, um, who helped with teaching Sam and I how to talk and how to, how to speak and to how to work with things and, other, and just other, um, other, other things. Um, then we would go to preschool. Um, Sam went to Carpenter for a year and then I went to Weber and then it was decided that, that we both would go to Weber and continue preschool. And um, so we were there for, we were there. Um, we had a great teacher. Um, her name was Mrs. Roberta, God bless her. Um, she helped teach, she was a special ed teacher and she very much helped Sam and I with learning how to, with learn, it was continuing to learn. And it was really a major process in learning and basically just learning about who, learning our, learning our craft, learning to interact with people other than each other. Um, one of the big things that, that I struggled with was I did not want to interact with anybody outside of Sam. And um, that was something that I really, really struggled with in my youth life. And um, that was something that they were trying to work with me to open and to expand. Um, I would go to Pine Tree. I would, um, I would go to Pine Tree in 1990, during the 19, like 1993, 1994 year. Um, and I ended up with a um, great teacher, Mrs. Northcote, and um, I also had a special education teacher in Mrs. D Danaskis, a former principal at Pine Tree. Um, it was there at Pine Tree where um, I made some really, really good friends, and it really started with a young man, um, didn't have a disability, but 
very much somebody that I look up to and I still look up to this to this day. His name is Steven Crowder. Steven was many ways the you couldn't ask for a better friend. Um, he really was, you know, he's very he, he listened to you. He you know, it didn't matter what things you'd say. Um, he would listen to you and I started to develop a very good friendship with Stephen and then it then I started becoming friends with his friends um, and it, it kind of grew from there where I started beginning to make more friends and um, a lot of that I give credit to um, obviously Stephen for being such a great friend and then really allowing me to expand and he didn't care if I had autism or not um, he very much um, he viewed me uh, for who I was, and um, it was something that I was always grateful for. Um, as I would talk about later, when I go into 2002, um, it would be, it would start this journey where, you know, there's this misconception with people that those with autism are often seen as not popular or not, you know, the whole, or it's often perceived as clumsy as narcissists, as arrogance. Um, you know, I really cared about what people thought of me because I tried to be um, someone that was likable, someone that was, um, I very much looked up to and idolized what Stephen was. And um, Stephen was one of the more respected kids at that time and um, he, you know, I, I really wanted to build my life very similar to that of Stephen. At the same time, um, I continued to expand my relationship with my family. I was very close with my grandpa on my mom's side. Um, I started developing a, a big liking to history, to um, World War II. Uh, I was very much, he would tell me stories about World War II. Um, my uncle on my dad's side would also tell me about his experiences in World War II. Um, also, I started liking weather a lot. Um, I very much would call myself the king of weather. I was so fascinated with it. Um, I started liking light switches. On and off, I would always, in my summer home in Caseville, I would always turn the lights on and off it would drive my grandma and, gran and my grandma, especially on my mom's or on my dad's side, crazy. Um, and I also had a, a fascination for creative writing. I like to write. I like to write stories, short stories. And um, I had a smaller fascination with colors. Now, many of these I still have fascinations of to this day. I mean, it's not just, you know, the sports, it's not just, you know, the whole, you know, being mentor, being a mentor, being friendly, it's, you know, I like weather, I like creative writing, I like history, and I like colors, and those are things that are very much um, fascinations of mine that I still have to this day. So I started to, I started to get more accepted by my peers, um, but something was still awry, something was still um, in it was in, you know, I was taking general education classes with special education classes. At that time, Lake Orion did not know much about what autism was and was very much learning about what um, autism was and um, is. And more often than not, Sam and I often get seen as, quote, pioneers for it, even though there are others that are far more, um, you know, that could be seen that way, but often more or less. Um, I'm, not, I'm not sounding cocky. I'm just, you know, we're, there's often, I get comments from people saying that Sam and I are often seen as pioneers for this journey, this life with autism that we, we, we've went on. So Sam and I were, you know, we're getting up there. We're getting, we're, we're well liked, we're well um, respected. Um, this would go, this would continue from elementary school, this would go into middle school, which we went to Scripps, both of us went to Scripps. 
Um, very proud of our three years there from 1999 to 2002. Um, you know, we started to gain friends. Um, I had a good group of guys that I made friends with from Blanche Sims, um, including my co-host from Between Terminas, Ian Weatherspoon. Um, I would say that, you know, the more friends that we gained, it, was, it really helped out because when later, we later when we start um, going through what our, when we start discovering that we have um, autism, this journey, we weren't going to go through this journey alone. And um, I think a lot of times when you go through journeys, you go, not only go through a personal journey, but you go through a journey with, you know, it, you go through that journey with others as well. And um, not everybody with autism goes through that. And um, one of the biggest things with men and women who have autism is everyone's different. Everyone has their different case, a different story. Um, the looks, the, the viewpoints, I mean, everybody is different. So it's really important to go that, you know, not everybody who has autism is the same. Everybody is different. Um, so now we're going into 2002. 2002 was quite a, a big year for me and um, for several reasons. We were graduating from middle school. We were about to go into high school. At this time, there was two middle schools, which was Scripps and Walden. And um, we ended up having to prepare to go into high school, which is, in itself is quite a experience where, you know, it's, it's a very different experience. It's a very, um, it can be a very challenging experience, especially for those who have a disability. Um, me and Sam participated in the track team that year. Um, However, something was a little bit awry in terms of, um, you know, I would struggle with it. I asked myself, why was I struggling with it? And um, was it because of, is it because of something that, you know, I don't know. It was something that I was struggling with and it was, you know, something I kept learning and kept working at. Um, I did shot put in ran and ran. I ran the 100. I ran the 70 at that point. Um, eventually, I'd do high school track as well. I'd run the 800, which uh, Coach Ford was like, you're crazy, but. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was, um, but yeah, it was, but 2002, it was, um, I was also going through some really tough times in my life. Um, my grandpa, who was very much a major influencer in my life, on my mom's side had passed away and um, it was very much a challenging adjustment and um, it was very difficult because I always envisioned that he would be there forever and then in June of that year um, Stephen passed away and um, I struggle with that to this day because Steve was Steve's very much my mentor, very much one of my best friends, and um, I still struggle with that to this day. Um, and obviously, he was kind of basically my pioneer. He was my, you know, so when he left us so soon, it was, I really struggled with that for years, and it was, and I still do to this day. So... It was, that was still quite a shock. And then when we get into high school, beginning of high school in um, August of 2002, um, myself, I was placed with Sam and um, three other men, three other men with, um, with autism. And we were told by our social worker, Mr. McClellan at the time, Great guy, I love him still. I great, I love him still, and I always will. Um, that we were diagnosed with autism, and um, the shock was it was very much a shock because my mom and dad never told me that I had it. Um, there was often this perception that those with autism were not were not popular, were not um, that were often seen as freaks, as often seen as, that's the perception, I mean, seen as freaks, as seen as, um, 
you know, just, it was like, it made you think. It made you really reflect. It was like, okay, was I going to tell, was I going to tell my friends that I have this or was I going to keep it quiet? Were they going to not let anyone know about it? And um, so I thought about it for a day and um, I decided to tell my closest friends first because I knew that they would accept me no matter what. And um, so I told them. And then I told some of my closest friends, which I have about, you know, maybe 50 or 60 at the time, um, that hey, I have autism. And my reaction, and their reactions to it was, what is autism? What is it? I want to learn more about it. So it was like, okay, um, let me research what it is, and um, I will, um, I'll show it to you, and uh, you know, and basically bring you into my world, and hopefully you guys come out better because of it. So I hid it from the rest of the school, but I only so only this fifty to sixty, my friends knew that well, Sam and I have autism. Um, Obviously, I took it far more than Sam, so that was very much um, something that, um, but still, it was very much, um, you know, we, we kept it quiet for a little bit until 2005, where um, we had a psychology class where um, I ended up deciding, hey, you know what, at this point, I'm struggling my class. I'm just going to just tell everyone that I have autism. And my teacher said I was crazy. <laughs> I was crazy for doing it. Uh, it's like, no, I don't want you to do it at first. But it's like, you know what? After a talk with Mr. McClellan, our social worker, you know what? Do it. Just do it. And he's like, okay. So I ended up working on the research paper. I ended up working on the, um, about my life, and um, I decided to do a skit because of it was going to be one of my, um, you know, I just wanted to do something different. And um, I ended up telling my class, knowing full well that they were going to tell everybody else in the school that I have, that I have autism. So I told it. It was probably one of the. It's probably the most emotional speech I've ever had, and um, right after the speech ended, I had two of my my best friends with me to make sure I wasn't going to break down and cry. But um, afterwards, I excused myself, went to the restroom, and actually had and actually cried because that was something that I had kept so dear and kept so close to the heart, and. Um, I ended up um, telling my classmates, and I ended up telling you know, basically the entire school that I have autism. So, but at that point, I felt, you know what? I have my 50, 60 friends who care about me no matter what, and we're all learning what autism is, what Asperger's syndrome is, and we're going to go through this journey together. And um, I will always be thankful to them for going on this journey together because I mean not everybody with autism gets that opportunity where um, you know where you, you discover who you are and um, you know and you do it and a lot of times it's mostly a personal by yourself journey I encouraged my friends to interact with my my classmates who have autism I encouraged them to sit with them at lunch talk life one of my favorite stories is um, one of my friends, Chris, who, um, who loved race car driving. And um, my friends ended up sitting with him at lunch and um, wanted to learn about race car driving. And um, it was, it, they would tell me, and it was, it was tremendous. Um, it made my heart warm. Um, I was getting myself involved with athletics. Um, Bill Reese, our former athletic director, um, played a major role in that. And, um, you know, and also um, 
I worked with uh, Tim English, who was um, at that time the girls' basketball statistician and the boys' basketball statistician. Um, one of my favorite stories in basketball was um, was Coach Steve Roberts, and um, I asked him, "Hey, could I be a manager for your team?" And he said, "For." And he said yes. So I was essentially a water boy at first, and then I later became a statistician. Uh, and it was just another way to really open myself and to expand my myself, and then um, just really getting a chance to expand and basically bring others into your world and to come out better because of it. So, and then um, I I would continue, you know, this journey through athletics. I would continue this journey with academics. Very important for me at that time to have study skills. It's a class where um, a lot of times it's mostly for those who, it's basically like your special ed class. Um, I had I had went through from elementary school having that special ed option. I was mostly general ed. Well, there, a lot of times um, those with autism will just take special ed classes. In mine and Sammy's case, we, we took general education and we took special education classes. You would see more men and women with autism take general education classes and special ed classes, basically as secondary. Um, I think Julie Gutman um, deserves some credit for that as well. Um, I would say that um, you know, with the with taking general education, and special education classes, um, it it definitely helped out. And that I would, you know, for anyone who has autism, I would recommend you take a study skills class because it will really, really help you out, and it really, really helps. Um, I was able to graduate in 2006 from Lake Orion, um, basically learning a lot more about myself and. Um, Obviously, Sam as well, but you know, at the end, at the end of the year, um, one of my favorite moments was um, we would have these end of the year awards, and um, so we end. So one of Sam and I were both last at were last in the award thing, and um, our class gave us a standing ovation because basically for living life with autism basically teaching our class, teaching our whole town, teaching our whole community that it is okay to be someone with aut to be someone that has autism and can succeed and can prove people wrong, prove the, the pundits wrong that hey, I can do such and such. I can I can make friends. I can succeed in life. And I can do some of the things that somebody else who doesn't have the disability that they that they can do, um, but yet was able to maintain some of my you know my love for sports, my love for weather, my love for history, my love for creative writing, you know my love for my love for colors. My I mean those are things that I still hold to this to dearly. You know, I still keep in touch with my friends to this day. And, um, you know, those types of things that you remember. And, you know, here I am at 30, 36 years old right now. You know, maybe in the future, obviously, obviously the future, 37, 38, you know. And just teaching and just being able to understand and live life with autism and embrace it and understand it, accept it and embrace it. Those are the three things that I live with. Um, you know, I was able to go to college. I was able to go to Oakland. Um, I was able to manage a basketball team over there, get a history degree over there and graduate within five years. Um, and a lot of times men and women who have autism, um, you know, don't always get a college degree. So continuing to make strides, and then coming back to Lake Orion, I um, worked as a custodian for uh, about a year and about a year and um, ten months, and then um, and then working as a lunch monitor at Scripps, which you know it felt like back in 2016 it was like coming back home, 
in um, because Scripps is my old middle school. Also, coaching a track team at Walden. I've been doing it since 2009. It's um, something I love doing. It's I love mentoring kids. In a way, mentoring is kind of the way that I give back to Steve because you know he was my mentor and he was one of my role models someone that I looked up to and um, you know so what better way to give back than to you know mentor young men and women a lot like yourselves um, you know a lot of that is a way of giving back to him giving back to Lake Orion giving back to the community giving back to you know every you know everyone who helped me along the way and um, you know a lot of times you see a lot of times you see you know autism in the news mostly for positive things some for negative things um, you know I think um, when I look uh, negative um, one of those was Sandy Hook and um, the shooter had autism and um, there was a lot of backlash against those with autism I even had a death threat against me um, and thankfully it was thankfully nothing ever happened out of that um, but it was really difficult at that time thankfully I um, thankfully I was able to um, ignore it basically and um, go on from there um, there's a lot of I got to meet people who have autism as well um, and know some people that have autism Anthony Ayani is one of my favorites um, he used to play he used to play college basketball at Michigan State he is also a well-known public speaker he speaks about his experiences his life with autism um, Jason McKellen is another is another one he's um, in 2006 my senior year he um, scored 20 points in a high school basketball game. Um, my senior year, which I'm also an 06er, um, a lot of them thought, you know, hey, you should, you should play this kid. You should play him. I'm like, uh, you know, whatever. But it, I would admit that I, I did grow jealous for a time seeing his success and everything like that. But I decided back in 2008 to reach out to him. And um, he's a great guy. And um, he's someone that, you know, that we'd have great conversations, especially online. Um, someone that I would view as a friend to this day. Um, there's other Lake Orion greats who have autism as well. Obviously, my brother and myself, um, Shaman Grigsby, is a tremendous, he's tremendous. He's got his own clothing line, very successful. Um, Mitchell Shoemaker, who played football for Lake Orion, tremendous, awesome guy. Um, you know, uh, Chris Veros, who owns uh, Kroger, very, it was a manager over in Kroger, uh, awesome guy as well. Um, you know, just so many, so many that are, have been really, really successful and um, continue to be successful to this day. And, um, you know, and just living life with autism has been, it's been an experience. It's definitely been, um, you know, it's important to understand that everybody with autism is different. Everybody with um, autism has their own stories, has their own friends, you know, has their own different, has their own differences. And, um, you know, it's okay. You know, it's okay. Um, I definitely would encourage you to get to know anyone who has autism you'll get a great experience. Um, definitely reach out, sit with someone at lunch. You'll get, you'll basically enter their world because you'll come out better because of it. Um, that's the one thing that I would definitely recommend is definitely enter someone's world, someone who has, someone with autism's world because you will come out better because of it. I had so many enter my world and came out better because of it and continuing to do so to this day um, again again for if you guys have any questions feel free to um, ask your teacher feel free to write their your questions down 
to your teacher. Um, they'll send it my way or reach out to reach out on my email. Um, your teacher will probably have my email. Um, and if you and if you see me around, whether it be in athletics or doing something else, don't be afraid to ask me. Um, you know, I'm usually very open-minded. I'm very, um, you know, I will answer your question the best I can, and um, we'll go from there. All right, thank you guys. You guys have a great night, and take care. Have a great evening, have a great day, you know. As they say, ta-ta for now.